Not everybody in the Air Force flies, but everybody in the Air Force serves. Tonight, the story of a man who served all around the world and ended up along the way in Rapid City. 30 years and 25 days. In his basement, retired Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Ott has a corner filled with three decades of memories. Not that I was counting, no sir. <laughs> and if he were, it would be savoring the days in a career full of surprises that for him began as an alternative to college. So after a little bit of thinking about it, I decided to enlist in the Air Force in the world of electronics. That was 1982, and like all enlisted folks, he began at ground level, what's called an Airman Basic. A sign at basic training read, it's not where you've been that counts, it's where you're going. And Kevin Ott was ready to go. And I was assigned as a uh, radar technician originally. Um, my first assignment was in Guam, a little island in the Pacific Ocean. And he didn't stop moving for the next 30 years. Stationed from coast to coast across the U.S., twice stationed in South Korea where he met his wife while serving there as a tech sergeant. But it was his deployment in 2003 and 4 to the country of Qatar that really jumps out. He had been chosen to be part of an anti-terrorism force protection team. Operation Iraqi Freedom was in full swing, and their team was camouflaged in plain sight, plain clothes, and amazingly, not armed. Well, we dress kind of like I'm dressed right now. Um, cotton dockers and a, and a, a khaki shirt, you know. So we were not uh, wearing Kevlar vests and helmets and carrying weapons and all that. Trying to blend in, their task was critical at a strategically vital moment. As at that point in time, they were getting ready to do a big troop rotation in and out of Iraq through Kuwait. So there was two to 300,000 troops that would be passing through the nation of Kuwait. Their goal was to make sure everything would be as safe as possible. And our job there was to go out to all the installations in the various countries that make up the Central Command area, um, hotel facilities as well, hospitals, seaports, airports, um, doing assessments. There were other teams doing the same thing in Iraq and Afghanistan. The group he was in covered four countries, Qatar, Kuwait, Jordan, and the African nation of Djibouti in the Horn of Africa region, checking security and risks like a microscope. Do they have protective film on the windows for a bomb blast? Do they have the parking lot set so far away from the facility so cars can't come up and explode? Um, and then from the military standpoint, we assessed you know, the gun placements, you know, the fields of fire and all those different things. In the heart of the Middle East and far away from his days as an entry-level airman two decades earlier, his specific area of expertise was to look at communications. How the, the, the particular facility was set up to communicate, they had two-way radios, landline telephones, cell phones were still kind of iffy in 2003, 2004. Nothing could be overlooked. Our motto or our thought was every day was September the 10th, the day before the attack. So that we, everything was, you know, set up to be okay. It could happen at any time. What do we need to do to get this particular place as safe as it can be? After his deployment to the Middle East, he served other roles in the Air Force, finally ending up here in the Black Hills in 2010. I was the uh, squadron superintendent, the chief of the comm squadron here at El Ellsworth, communication squadron. In 2012, he retired as a chief master sergeant, the highest enlisted rank in the Air Force, proving that sign at basic training was right on target. If you've met someone fascinating along the way, please email or call us with your story ideas. And one other thing I found interesting that he said that they thought about while they were over there in the Middle East is that they had to be right every time, whereas the terrorists only had to be right once. Yeah, that seems like a very stressful job <laughs> he, yeah. he took on, but obviously was very successful at it too. And I love the underdog factor that he started at the lowest rank yep. possible as an, as, as an enlisted guy and ended up as the highest enlisted rank. Yeah, great story. Cool guy. Thank you. And El 